Our guys have uh, come back from the break um, feeling pretty good, pretty spunky, and looking forward to getting going here. Uh, we had a day Monday and got some good work, and, and then uh, today we kick it into competing and battling, and, and uh, you can just feel them. They, they feel pretty good. Um, have pretty good turnout on the uh, on the injury list too. We got a lot of guys practicing, so we're feeling pretty pretty good about that. We're up against a um, a, a team that's really has done a lot of really similar things that we've done. They started you know kind of funky and lost a couple, and then they just played some great football. And uh, they shoot, they beat New England, they beat the Packers, they beat Miami last week, looking really good. And, and uh, so it's going to be a terrific matchup. I hope and hope we can make it that and. Uh, it's a talented group, and it's kind of fun to go against Matt Patricia for in his first season. Always had a lot of respect for the work that he's done over the years, and and uh, kind of looking forward to playing against this club. So um, we're ready to go. This is healthy as you've been all year. Uh, yeah, it does feel like that. Uh, you know, getting KJ to come back, and and uh, Ed Dixon's practicing too, and um, Machine coming back out for us. A um, number of guys also feeling a little bit better just because of the way the games have gone the last few weeks. So we are in pretty good shape. Any more indication if KJ can play or not Sunday? No, nothing's happened since he did fine on Monday, made it back out of that. So we're just one day at a time. But I don't, I'm anticipating that he's going to play, um, and Ed as well. Yeah, so something's going to have to come off, you know, um, where they don't respond to the practice work that they've had. But it looks like they're ready to go. Deion Jordan, what, what's his status? Um, he, he's he's the best he's been in a while too. So it's good good to have him. He's had that knee issue that we've always w worked with, and uh, the, the break helps him. Lions for a long time have been known for just slinging it around, throwing it like crazy. Just with the run game they've added this year, how much different? Yeah, it just there? balances out their attack and just just makes them that much more difficult. Uh, Matthew Stafford has always been a great football player. We've had great respect for his ability to throw the ball, and, and he's he's been a guy with, that has. Re over the years have relied on big passing days, big passing games, big emphasis that way. Um, and you know, coming off this game last week where they just tore it up on the ground, uh, it really makes it difficult to, to figure out what to do against them. Um, he, he's playing really efficiently. He's really sharp. That You can't sack him. His numbers are great. Um, you know, his, his completion numbers are up. I mean, he's, he's doing everything well. So it's a very difficult uh, style to play against. And so we're going to. Crank it up, see if we can get it done. What do you think of Kerryon Johnson come draft time? Uh, I thought he was a really good player. We really liked him. You know, we we went ahead and we were busy with with our running back, but um, you know, we had evaluated him extensively. He's elusive and, and aggressive, creative. Um, should he played He's been playing really well. He's averaging over six yards a carry right now. It's, I don't know if anybody else is doing that in the league. Ed Dixon, he, he obviously has the right skill set to be tight end, but what does he bring in veteran savviness? Well, well, I need to wait and tell you that. We haven't had him very often, very much. You know, we just had him a little bit in the off season. Um, his background is well versed. You know, he's done a lot of stuff. He's um, in the offense they were in in Carolina, very creative with what they did with their tight ends, and he was involved with all kinds of stuff. And he's been placed all over the field. He's been in the backfield. He's been out of the backfield. Um, so. He, all of that really gives us confidence that there, there's stuff that we can do with him that we're, we're looking forward to. But really, he has not practiced with us very much. And so um, this is really, we're kind of opening up the Christmas present here. You know, it's kind of fun to get him going. You talked about Barcavius Mingo moving and playing a little Will the last few weeks. What, I guess, led to that decision to even give him a look there? Um, it was really a game plan thing that happened a couple weeks ago that we involved him more um, and... Uh, to, to use him as a rusher, and during the course of the time, just you know, sprinkling in some of the other calls, you know, he just looked really comfortable and handled it really well. And it just, you know, Kenny just felt like there's no reason to hold him back from it. And, and uh, so it's it's a tremendous boost for him in his career too to be able to play behind the line of scrimmage as he as he grows to do that. So it really it will help him. I don't think anybody's seen him do that very much, and and uh, he's surprised that it's come so easy to him. So we'll we're, we're continue to work on with it. Did you find out anything more on Michael Kendricks? No, um, and uh, I'm expecting to know more. I was, I'm sorry I don't have any. I, th I was hoping I'd get an update today or yesterday, and it didn't happen, so we'll see what happens. Your offensive line, just where they've come this year and in the last few weeks especially, just how, how encouraging has that progress been for the whole offense? It's really helped our team, and it's um, it's been uh, – 
you know, under in, in process throughout, and we've been trying to get this done, and, and uh, it's been great to see the, the emergence kind of happen pretty quickly, and, and we just needed to turn, you know, turn the page on what we needed to do and focus and all of that. These guys were raring to go and ra waiting for us. Um, so it, it just helps all aspects of it. Um, I'm, I'm anxious to, to watch the guys who haven't had the playing time come back in and help us when they can. Some guys are working really hard there. That Joey played really well when he had his shot. Uh, Ethan now can get back in, in there and do some playing when we need him. Um, uh, Simmons has done a nice job too. You know, he, he's a guy that we're really excited about. So those guys will be able to help us as well as George, uh, who's you know kind of sprinkling into some different stuff at the tight end spot. So all of those guys have just taken a bigger part in what's going on with the club. You can just feel them, and, and uh, that's always a good, it's a good characteristic of your of your locker room. You do over here. What's up? <laughs> Detroit's really struggling against the run, so do you expect to have a lot of success again this week? You know, the, their numbers don't look great in the average per rush, um, but uh, they're playing good defense, and they're playing good winning defense. And, and it's 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 a kind of characteristic of how the Patriots have been over the years, not so much the specific numbers, but um, you know they never really ranked really highly over those years that, they're, uh, that they've done all the winning, but they've always been effective, and, and uh, they've controlled scores and played smart, and, and they've given teams problems. They're, they're still doing that, and, and uh, so... Um, we have a lot of regard for for how they handle their business and how they, they play their football. They're unique. They have their own style, and, and it's it's that Patriot way. And, and uh, obviously, Matt has brought it with him to, to Detroit. I assume you assume they'll throw Damon Harrison right into that. What do you what do you think? Of I would that? think so. I, they, I was talking to their writers earlier, and, and uh, they said, you know, how are you gonna how are you gonna deal with them? And I said, I hope he gets there on Saturday, and he drives, you know. To Detroit and take some time getting there because there's not much you can do with that guy. He's really he's really a monster in there. And running game, yes, but he also causes problems in the pass game too. We we picked him up. He came on our radar when he was at the Jets, uh, and he was kind of in there where there was a chance. But he he has he had emerged too far too fast for us. We couldn't get to him, and he wound up going to the Giants. Um, so we had a lot of respect for him. Their pass rate, they haven't had uh, Ezekiel Elliott for most year, but they still have a bunch of sacks. Just what, what is yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's been a real problem. They're they're, they're twenty one sacks right now, you know, and and uh, I think they're the the highest rated team per pass, you know, sack wise. It's, they're they're very active. Um, it's really mixing their looks, and it's a combination of things. It's not just the dominant guy coming off the edge. They've done it uh, various ways. Uh, uh, Devon's got five sacks, and, and, and I mean, Ansel's only got one. He hasn't even been able to contribute yet, and he's you know a highlighted player. So I don't know if he's getting back or not, but um, it's really it's a it's a team kind of thing. It's a lot of coverage uh, oriented sacks as well. They do a lot of cool things with their coverage to make you hold the football, and, and it's been just a combination of guys getting the pressure. Golden State's had a uh, great consistent five years in Detroit, and uh, I know that there were reasons why he left. Do you ever allow yourself? Crap when a guy goes moves on like that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I like I, I liked him a lot, you know. And, and you know, sometimes you just can't get it done, you know, and just won't doesn't fit. Um, I don't mind saying that. I think Golden's a great player. I've loved the way he plays as, as a young guy coming in. You know, he he, uh, he always had a knack. He was such a naturally competitive, you know, kind of athletically artistic type of guy in his style, and he could make you miss and, and break tackles and do things that a lot of guys couldn't, you know, didn't do. And it just came so naturally and easy to him. It was always fun to have on the club as a return or two, um, and which he's doing now. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we just couldn't get it done at the time. Between Golden and Deshaun Shen, we both on a lot of familiar faces there. When, when you go against former players, do you, is it just totally business as usual, or do you try to kind of have a little moment and say hi to them? Well, I kind of let the moments happen. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not designed how we do it, but um, those guys, all those three guys, were really fantastic guys in this program, and they're significant characters and and personalities and and contributors, and and uh, so, you know, those those guys are, they feel like they're always kind of our guys because they started with us and grew up with us, but. Uh, so it'll be fun to play against them. You know, we're, we're, we're going to get after them. Hopefully, you know, make it hard on them, but uh, just like they'll do to us. And uh, so it should be real competitive and fun and all that. But if we get a chance, we'll visit with them. Sure. What are you seeing in how they're using Luke? I mean, it sounds like they're using him a lot in their running game kind of stuff. Yeah, he's he's doing the things that he's he's shown. You know, he's motioning around. He's fitting in different different ways in the backfield and out of the backfield. And he hasn't got a lot of passes. I think he's got nine nine balls so far. But he's. Uh, uh, he's a versatile player. He's real well versed and can do a lot of stuff. And so, um, yeah, they're u utilizing that. 
characterize how DJ Fluker has impacted this, this team so far? What's the word you said? Factor? Characterize how, how he's impacted this team. Impact. Okay. okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been nothing but positives, really. It's been it's it's been a, a, a really pleasant surprise to see him be such a factor, because his attitude is so good. He just cares so much about playing the game. He loves it so much. It's so important to him to get to the meeting room and and, and you know just be around the fellas and in the locker room and and then his play style, the physical nature that he plays with brings something special to us. But then it's more than that because it, it's just his personality that, that comes along with it. So we're very, very fortunate. And uh, Mike Solari had, you know, had you know, given us the heads up that this is a special guy, and if we could get him, you know, and all of that. So we were lucky to, to have that insights. Um, you, you could always see the play, but we didn't know, you know, what was going on under the helmet. And he, he's a really special guy. So he's been, a, he's been a blast. You say it's a pleasant surprise just in terms of saying in the helmet, like what's he been able to have? What has he been able to do? What would, I guess what makes him a pleasant surprise? Well, it's it's his, he's got such a big personality and, and such a um, uh, a positive, uh, supportive personality to a, to a club that you know likes to play on a, on a lot of energy and a lot of juice. It fits him perfectly, you know. And he's one of the guys that are out in front, you know, leading the charge and carrying the flag kind of guy. So that that's that's where I think he's he surprised us because we just didn't know him, you know. And, and uh, um, he's been a great addition. Have you had any conversations with Frank Clark's people about an extension for him? We're, we're always working. Frank, you know, all of our guys, there's a, as, we, as you know, we have always have a kind of a process to it. Uh, John's been working on it throughout. And there's been good conversations and stuff. And over, over time, I think we're, on, we're clear where we are and we're trying to figure stuff out. Um, Frank's playing great football. He's been a tremendous factor in our program for a long time. I, I think I've mentioned to you guys that he's just continued to mature and take over and become a leader in, in a number of ways um, that makes him a real valuable player for us. So we're, you know, we're, it's ongoing. Yeah. What's the characteristic of Frank that you see rubbing off most onto guys? In that his, uh, his, the consistency in his effort, he is fantastic. He's got the word we use always is motor. He just doesn't stop. Doesn't stop, and and uh, he practices like that too. And so that's I couldn't ask for anything more. I mean, you couldn't ask for a guy who's a really good performer that gives that kind of uh, leadership, direction, and focus. You know, so obviously to other people, and and it just rubs off. And he, it gives us an example that's positive and good all the time. It's such a big deal to us the way we practice and how we the intensity that we bring. And Frank's right at the, the cutting edge of it. So <clears throat> that's a. Um, you know, it's it's he's he, he hasn't always been as consistent as he is, and he's grown into it, and he's and he's taken over the uh, the responsibility to be that guy. And he, he it comes easy to him because he does have great energy and he plays so hard, um, but he has really uh, kind of championed it and really made it good for us and a special part of him. The buy and some time to kind of look back and reflect on the season so far. Just where do you feel like the direction this team is going with three wins in the last four? Well, the, the the obvious part of it is is we feel comfortable with where we're going. We like we like the way it's going, and we like the feel of it, and and the way we're the style of play that we're that we're working to recreate each week um, is really obvious to us. And that's a really big asset, you know. And it, it's when you don't know is when it's hard, you know. And so we do know where we're trying to go, and how we're, how it's uh, supposed to feel and look, and what it takes, and and how we need to practice to get that done, and study to get that done, and then and then rally on game day and support one another. And we, those things are all coming together. So. It gives us a chance to take this as far as we can take it, you know. And, and uh, it's a long haul. We're, you know, we we started slowly, and and uh, it's going to be a long battle to, to work our way into it. But uh, there's 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 championship ways in the way we play, in the way that we're we're going about our business that gives us a shot and and to have a really good year. It's just this week. It's just today is how it goes, and that's how we have to be disciplined about it, which we're working hard to understand that. But um, but it, it's a. Uh, there's a shot for us, and it's, it's, it's exciting for these guys. It's a little break. <coughs> yeah, a few days. Yeah. Were you out of town, or did you yeah. take off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And took a little break. With, with your secondary, <laughs> what has stood out the most about the <laughs> What's that? You, with your secondary and all the turnover there? What has stood out the most about the way those guys have played? Uh, uh, let me see. What, I, I think the consistency that you might think would have you know, been hard to find what, what, um, has kind of been you, you've seen us play with style from the first week on, you know, and we've gotten after the football pretty well. And uh, guys have stayed on top really well. And we've, we've been physical too. We've had a lot, of, a lot of hits and stuff. So those are all kind of the, the, 
the building blocks of being a, a good group. I think the thing that I'm, I'm most pleased with, and I think uh, Bradley has a lot to do with this, is, is the communication has been really good. And and so the coordination, you know, Andre's done a great job and Nick has done a great job of making sense to our guys. And that's what adds to the consistency. So, I mean, that's okay. That's six weeks, and but it's always what are you, what are you gonna do now, you know? And so, uh, but that's what it's felt like. Um, been a good, consistent group, and they've been able to do some stuff, and they've been active, and they've been physical. And so that's that's you know, we'd like to keep that going. With Trey specifically, have there been fewer growing pains than you maybe would have expected, given his background as a yes. former safety? Yeah, it's still early. <laughs> He's just still getting going. Um, it's kind of gone like I hoped it would go. You know I, that he would he would show that he was physical, uh, that he would belong. You know, and he could fit in um, physically and mentally. He's he's done that. He's shown us that. Um, he's been very active. Um, you know, he's forced three turnovers that are really legit plays that they were going to have the ball and he knocked it around and we got the ball back. You know, so it was uh, th those are big plays to make. Um, kind of different than interceptions. You know, he's forced three big plays. Um, so. But he's got a lot to learn still. He's still growing, and, and we're going to see. You take a look at the quarterbacks. We're going to see in the next next couple of weeks, uh, next couple of months. I really, um, it's going to be a great test for all of us, and and, uh, and that we'll know later where he is. Merrill Hodge and a neuropathologist just released a book that criticized a lot of the or criticized one particular study uh, regarding CTE and, and kind of the narrative at large in terms of how it's been portrayed. Um, Curious, what, what have your thoughts been on, on that subject as, as you've seen the story develop and you know, see some of the risks that, that are out there? And yeah, I can't comment about the book. I don't know anything about what Mel wrote, but um, I, I think it's been, a, uh, it's been a really important uh, realization that there's, there's, there's stuff to study and stuff to work at and stuff to um, respect and regard to the point where we, we're willing to make changes, you know, big changes. We, we've changed the game a lot. And, and uh, it's really happened maybe in five years, you know. But um, without that great research and, and, and at least the reasons to continue to look at it, I don't know that we would have made the changes that we've made. And so, um, you know, we've, we've been advocates for the change here and, and uh, because we respect the fact that maybe there is something there that we need to, you know, to take care of. And, and uh, so I think it's really good stuff. And then I, I think the cool thing is, is to see that from the top of the league all the way throughout, um, guys have been willing to adjust. And, and we've fought to keep the game as a great game that it has always been. And I don't think it looks that much different to anybody. And, but there are, these are major changes that we've made. And um, maybe there's still more. And if, as we learn more, let's, you know, whatever. But uh, we'll, we'll go for it because it's the right thing to do. And I'll, let me say this too. Because we need to take care of our guys. You know, this is a great game. This game is a, it takes a physical toll on our, on our players over the many years that they play. And they need to be respected. That needs to be respected and regarded with every bit of our knowledge and smarts and, and guts to make the changes and, and the willingness to do the right things. And so, yeah. Uh, Pop Warner numbers dropping and stuff like that. Do you, do you think about the future of the sport and, and whether you know it's going to be as popular? People are going to keep playing because of a lot of the fear that apparently. I, I, it's it's yeah. It's the, the discussion is out there, and it's I think the numbers do show you. You know, there's reason you know to to look into what what's going on, who who is the game for, and and, and all that, and how does it fit. Um, I, I think we're trying to learn and try to understand that. Um, it's a great game, and I think it's it's going to be around because of because it is. Um, but maybe it isn't for everybody. We'll we'll find out as we go. And, and uh, all the information we need, everybody needs to be aware of the information. I don't think we should. I hope everything is disclosed so that we can learn and grow and make the right choices and do the right things as we move forward. You had a trade deadline. You acquired Dwayne Brown. Uh, what did, what did you learn then, and maybe you've already known about the difficulty of a midseason acquisition in terms of integrating? Yeah, that's a good question. Well. Um, I think it depends. It depends on the individual and the situation that he's coming into. You know, does the guy fit in? Does he automatically have a good spot that he, you know, that makes a natural transition and all that? Um, you know, and that's I, I, sometimes you may pick up a player where you're already stacked at a position and maybe it doesn't fit as obviously. I mean, maybe maybe that's why you don't make those moves. But in our case, we felt very comfortable with the opportunity. We picked a guy who was. Better than we could have imagined as a, as, a, as an individual, um, as a leader, as a competitor, 
as an athlete. I mean, he's, he's just better in every way. I mean, he, and he's been a fantastic addition to the program, one that we were gladly re able to reward and, 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 you know, contractually and all of that. Um, but there is, there's cause for concern because it could disrupt you know, the normal flow of what's going on with your club. And, and uh, that's why, you know, you got to try to make good decisions and hopefully it, things fit and, and all of that. And, and uh, you know, so and it's our, our experience we've learned, you know, over the years, you know, with the things that we've done. And uh, this, this last one, was a, that was a great example of how it could work out for the best. Be kind of a little partially along the line that Matt was talking about. There was all that confusion early in the year about targeting and roughing the quarterback. How much of the players kind of caught up, you think, to what the yeah, NFL Yeah, no, that's a good for? question. They, they really, really have made – that's what I'm saying. There's big adjustments. I mean, I've talked to the guys at the league office about this to, to try to kind of ring, sound the bell that the guys have – changed. You can see it in the style of play. You can see it in, across the board in, in, in decisions that players are making. And they've become conscious that there are opportunities to make decisions on how you're going to hit guys. That, that's before you just went for it, you know. And it, but now they can see and they're able, they're such extraordinary athletes and, and competitors, they can f feel the opportunities and they can adjust, which I would think some coaches and, and players would have thought, nah, there's no way. You can't play the game that way. They can they're doing it, and the game's different, and it's the game's, you know, well, it's 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 in a good place. So, uh, I think the adjustments uh, maybe more quickly than anybody would have thought. The players adjusted probably first, and the officials have followed suit, and they've they've done a really nice job. Albert has done a, uh, has done a great job of coordinating and, and, and communicating with coaches and players and, and people around the league to see what needed to be done and evaluating what is and what isn't legal and all that kind of stuff. And I don't think it's even an issue in, in, right now. I think it's the plays that they're calling. And if they make a mistake, they're fixing it and, and, and they're trying to get right. And, uh, and there's, there's always going to be some errors, you know, because it happens so fast. And so, um, but I, it's, it's in a great place right now. I think the league should be really proud of the moves that they made to this point and, and we'll just keep growing with it. Without helmets to try and take the head out of it. At times. We've always tackled. We've always done our drills and stuff without without helmets. Not always to the ground and all of that, but um, there, there's a great portion of our practice time that we don't have helmets. You know, in, in the off season as well. And uh, yeah, you know, we've we've shown how you can do it. We can teach little kids how to tackle, and they don't have to play with their head involved. You know, and and uh, so um, yeah, we have done that for a long time. Back to the trade deadline. Why do you think it's so much more active now than it was just a few years ago? Yeah, I don't know that. I, I don't. I don't have the crystal ball on that one. I don't know. You know I would think because it's it, there's been some good success stories would you know would lead people into it. Cause usually, people are really wary of putting themselves out and making the statement and all that. Uh, just I just think maybe numbers. You know, so that's a gradual effect. A couple of examples this year now. Coach is going for two point conversions, up, uh, down eight points. Uh, this is kind of citing probability and all that. Where, where do you stand on this? Well, it, it, it's going to depend. It's to depend on some, a number of variables, but it's it's a worthwhile decision that, that's um, a good football decision to go for it in in in, um, in many instances. So it's a. It's a possibility for us, and we've already, you know, we've communicated on it, and and we want to make sure we make the right decisions at the right time. I think it's hard for some coaches to do it, and harder for some coaches than others, because you got to risk a little bit to, to go do it. But um, you know, if you think about two point conversions historically, they've been about forty eight percent, you know, successful. So, you know. If you went for it every single time and you went for two forever and didn't kick the ball anymore, you're going to be pretty close to what the numbers are anyway. So. Um, but it's a good aggressive way to play, and I think it's a good message about you know going for it and when you get your chances, and it depends on how you feel and what's happening and everything else. When you're making those decisions in game, do you have anybody on the headset who's reminding you of the stats? Yeah, or? yeah. Matter of fact, I do. Uh, we have a kind of a little group, and but I basically talked to Carl Smith, and he, he's the guy where the, the, is my first first one I'm talking to, and I talked to Nate, and I, there's some guys that are kind of the specialists for me, you know, that I go to in the situations and. Um, they have their areas of strength and expertise a little bit, and, but but really, Carl's the guy I'm, I'm always working with. I mean, we've been doing this for years, you know, so it's it's just really comfortable for me to know we've seen so many situations, you know, together. So we've just learned together. Have you ever been in a situation that Brable was in this week where they're down seven, basically the last play of the game, and he decides to go for the win instead of overtime? And what's your philosophy in that particular? Yeah, I, again, I would tell you it depends. You know, give me an out. Uh, it depends, you know, um, on the game. But um, it, 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 
you know, do you feel great about your, your chance to make it is one of the issues, you know? Do you feel like, yeah, we can, we can get this done, whatever, whatever your call is, whatever the, the players that you have. You know, with Russell, you feel like you can always do it, so he's, he kind of lures me into going for it, you know, always. Um, but uh, it's, it just depends on the games, you know? And uh, have I been in a situation? Yeah, a lot of times. We've kicked a lot of, a lot of extra points and, and gone into overtime and known we were going to win in overtime. It felt like that, you know? Um, I mean, just take us back to the, the probably the one – uh, was it the Packers game or something? Like that? Did we do that? Was it the Packers we won in overtime uh, for, the, for the championship game? Yeah, and that was, and I think that was one right there. We could have gone for two right there. You know, why didn't you, Pete? You know, <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, why didn't you? Because <laughs> I wanted to be really dramatic and win an OT. You know, I, I knew we were going to win the flip. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Now that you've done it, can can you imagine playing a game in London and not having to buy? Coming right back. No, no. What does uh, this yeah, you know that. I think early on that I think this is the. I, I totally advocate the, this way that it, it's set up, and I think it should be that way. Um, you know, I have nothing but the positive to say about the whole experience, and, and even the coming back to the buy, the whole thing. It worked out great, so um, I got no problem with it. Do they ask for your input on how it went, or is just yeah? Sort of yeah, I talked to the commissioner about it. Matter of fact, oh, you, yeah. Do you think their London team? A permanent London team's a possibility. I, you know, I don't. I, I, it's hard for me to imagine how that's going to work, because of the the travel. It would be so much different. You know, it, would you come over and stay? Say you're playing West Coast teams. You come over and stay for a couple of weeks. You know that kind of stuff. It, it's it's just going to be a lot different. So, how can you weigh that? that that's that's equal. You know, and, and I don't know. I don't know. That, uh, that's going to work out. So it's, it's difficult. I don't. I'm sure they're trying to figure it out too. Anything else? Thank you. Are we bringing in lunch or something here? <laughs>